JM on Cars is sponsored by Car Vertical. With just a registration number, or even better, a VIN, Car Vertical will search over 20 European databases to find out whether any car you're looking at has a hidden past. They can see if a vehicle was used as a taxi, stolen, suffered fire damage, or involved in a crash, even when it wasn't written off, so could pass other checks. Car Vertical is now an essential tool in my car buying kit, putting all the information I need to know together in one easy to read report. Even better, if you follow the link in the description down below, you'll get 10% off. A big thank you to them for being today's sponsor. Guten Morgen, Leute. Heute mit GM, das neue Auto aus dem DDR, der Trabi 601S. Of late, I have said that I am on the look for my next car and I want it to be a classic. Now, in truth, I've just spent loads of money on a car, so I'm not actually that desperate to buy something, but hey, you know what it's like being a car enthusiast. The moment one thing has arrived, you're always looking for what's going to go next to it. And there are many reasons I have decided that what I buy next has to be a classic, but what I haven't yet worked out is what kind of classic it's going to be. And today, we're driving a Trabi. Now, if somehow you've got through life without working out what one of these is, allow me to tell you, if you happen to live in East Germany, the German Democratic Republic, or DDR, this was the car. And I don't really mean sort of the most popular car, it was, for a lot of people, just the car. And as a result, you really had to like it because it was essentially all you were gonna get. And you could wait a very, very long time to get one of these. You put your order in, and I'm not sure they were actually very expensive, but the mechanics of communist production meant that they weren't really doing the whole supply and demand thing that well. It took a long time to get one of these. So if you got one, you weren't gonna sell it. As you probably noticed, it is a column-mounted four-speed manual, and as you may be able to hear, it is a two-cylinder, two-stroke engine, making a mighty 26 horsepower. This is foot down. Absolutely pinned. Come on, your girl. Always got to be careful I don't put it from sort of second back into first, but not an awful lot of danger of that happening. I have actually driven one of these before. Those who watched the channel for quite some time may remember it, and I drove it in perhaps the best possible place you could ever experience a Trabant. I drove it in Berlin in the winter, and it was fabulous. Now I'm just going to let this uh, modern traffic past. Brakes are okay, steering actually is great. Uh, indicators do not self-cancel. That wing mirror over there is useless, but luckily his rear view mirror is actually really quite good. Now I recently drove another item of communist mechanization, the Lara Riva. That actually felt much more like you'd sort of, well, expect of a car. This does have quite a few quirks. First off, the aforementioned column mounted gear change, and when you go into fourth, which is not something I'm sure I've ever done in a Trabi, you have to be careful because it will free wheel. You also have to be aware of the fact that because this is a two stroke, the lubrication is in the fuel. You mix the oil and petrol. Incidentally, it's actually very good on fuel, it does about 40 to the gallon. Fuel gauge is old fashioned, which is to say, it's a stick, but the other thing you have to be wary of is the fact that when you're not on the throttle, because the engine isn't really getting any petrol, that means it's also not getting any oil. So if you're going down a hill, a long hill, the best thing to do is to just keep the throttle on. It's counterintuitive and as weird as that might sound, that is what you have to do. own and this is actually a really cute car and here's one of the uh, here's one of the best things about classic cars right is that I am card carrying tar I do love the attention that driving certain cars brings and this morning in the car park we had a regular Porsche Cayman 2.7 987 we had a Porsche Cayman GT4 981 generation 
and we had a Ferrari 430 Scuderia. A few people, general public, turned up. They walked straight past all of those up to the Trabi and they wanted to know what it was all about. And that is really what you're signing up for if you buy one of these. I am told by my kind hosts up here in Scotland, George and Caitlin, that by far the best way to get attention is to buy a Beetle. Now those actually are starting to command reasonable money, but the humble Trabi is still something of an affordable vehicle. You can pick up something in this kind of condition, which is to say working, but not concourse, for about three grand. And honestly, with something like a Trabi, I wouldn't want a concourse one anyway. I'm also quite enjoying the fact that I am in traffic. Normally if I was doing a, a car review, this would be absolutely frustrating the living daylights out of me. But the truth here is that I'm sort of driving this more or less as quickly as I could. Sorry, I need to turn the aircon on. Quite warm in here. Now some modifications have been made to this car, but not really very many. The most obvious and where I'm sat is the fitment of a quite nasty, frankly, Blaupunk stereo. I don't know why someone's decided to just cut a great big hole out of the uh, out of the dash to fit it because there, there is actually room for a stereo, just an old one. All the farm traffic on this road today, aren't we lucky? Power! Doesn't have much. It's about 40 mile an hour now. Top speed of these I think was about 62, but I think you need the assistance of gravity to achieve that. This does not feel very keen. They weigh only about 600 odd kilos and they are in theory quite simple to maintain because in the engine there are only five moving parts, the benefit of it being a two-stroke. That was convenient because if these broke you probably had to fix it yourself so everyone that owned one of these did become their very own version of a Haynes manual. There is only ever really a limited amount I could tell you about a car like this from a, a road tester's perspective because most of it, of course, is terrible. The engine is awful, the brakes, actually they're okay, and the steering is quite nice, it's got a lot of heft to it. Unsurprisingly, not power assisted. The view is actually not that bad, lots of glass in here. The body is made of this lightweight material called Duraplast. There was always a rumour that it was actually uh, edible and a lot of animals used to nibble on these cars, but that I think is not true. The funny thing is that I'm sure there are plenty of true things about these that I don't know why anyone ever felt the necessity to make stuff up. But let's instead talk a little bit about the Trabi more as what it represents rather than what it is. And that's where things I think get interesting because this is one of the reasons I'm really interested in a classic as my next purchase because they are genuinely more than just a, a simple machine. This car represents just a whole era. It's a different time, it's a different place. It does feel very much fish out of water here in some beautiful Scottish scenery. Really, a cold winter in Berlin is exactly home for this car. All right, let's go for it. Actually, this car's doing a good job of getting up the hill. I'd say at least as good as the Lada Riva. It doesn't have quite the same poke, but that's not a problem. I think with more people in this, it would be a bit of an issue. Yeah, full family of four in here. But that was okay, because food was hard to get in the DDR, so you'd all be lighter. Ah, my nemesis, a hill. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. I am doing about 50 mile an hour up into fourth, and I feel like I'm kind of on the ragged edge. That's one reason I want a classic car, because you can drive the wheels off the thing and not even be troubling a speed limit. Oh, bit of, bit of wobble under braking there. This car, incidentally, is a 1985 601S, which if you spoke German, you'd already know. Actually, did I mention the year? No. 1985. Numbers in German are horrible, by the way. And, uh, this got independent rear suspension, but curiously, still has leaf springs up the front. I'm not sure I know a car which has got coils at the back and a leaf spring at the front, but leaf springs, from what I know, are quite durable, so that's probably one of the reasons they put it in there. 
They even rallied these for a little bit. They did take them racing, which is amazing. Same as the Lada. I think some of them did okay as well. I mean, they're small, they're tiny, they're light. You, you probably can get quite a bit more power out of that two-stroke engine. It's about 600cc. So 25, 26 horsepower is not really a lot for it to be generating. Oh, crikey. That's full pelt. That's allegedly 100 kph. That's 62 mile an hour. I'm sure the police will be descending upon me any moment now to throw me in the slammer, clap me in irons. But you see, you drive a car like this around, not only is it enjoyable to drive at very, very modest speeds, but it's also something that people just absolutely go gaga for. They love it, they love looking at it, they love talking about it. You generally get free stories. Okay, perhaps not so much if you bought something like a Trapan. That'll mostly be stories about people when they went on holiday to Berlin. However, if you do have something like a Beetle, a 2CV, or that kind of stuff, you're always going to get people reminiscing over what that car means to them. The Lada Riva I had, it was just a direct connection to some memories. My buddy Darren absolutely adored it. And this, for me, I think is perhaps not the kind of thing that I'd want to be driving about as a classic because it doesn't really mean anything to me. It's fun and it's owner Gordon actually also has a 550, so clearly a man of impeccable taste. But the Trabi is something that I think I enjoy in small doses in the right scenarios, which this is not, by the way. I feel like I'm driving down these roads a million miles an hour in this thing. I do enjoy it. I, I really do. You have to remember to turn fuel off when you stop as well because it, it will leak. Like a motorbike, you've got off, you've got on, and you've got reserve. But you don't ever want to go to reserve because if you do, it'll just drag everything that's in the fuel tank through because there is no filter when you go to the reserve. So the Trabi is a great example to me of the fact that you can buy a classic for very little money, have yourself an iconic car that you don't even need to keep pristine, because to be honest, a pristine Trabi would be a travesty. Would it be a travesty? <laughs> anyway, and... Uh, but it's just so unbelievably different. It's a great way to stand out and it's something you can just go in for a drive. So careful, so, so careful. I think I could get into a lot of trouble in this car. So I need something with a bit more poke. I think this would frustrate. I want something I could enjoy in a more sporting fashion, but this car is also a real reminder of just, just how lucky we are because, you know, it's ultimately, it's a car. And by very definition, that was a luxury. This isn't a car where people wanted to get the right one, you know, had to get the one with the power steering, the electric windows, the right trim level. There's no Trabi GL XLR. There's no Trabi R. There's no Trabi gear. None of that stuff. It's just a car from a different place and a different time. And it is an actual piece of history. It's like going to an art gallery and just borrowing the Mona Lisa and taking her out for some lunch. I love it, but it's not the car for me. So, the hunt continues. A huge thank you to its owner, Gordon, for lending it to me. Don't forget to like, comment down below, and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.